I had a three quarter million dollar home, half of which was resting on this LVL, and I essentially kind of Hi, I'm Joel Walsman, CEO and Master Electrician of Jefferson Electric. In previous videos, we've talked about code compliant locations for outlets around the home. Yes, the code speaks to everything and where the outlets are located. If they're in the floor, distance from the wall. If they're in the wall, height above the floor. All of these things are governed and parameters are given by the National Electrical Code. In this video, we're going to talk about the concept of running wiring throughout the room. So we, we talked about how the home run is coming from the electrical panel. The home run should be labeled, it is significant, and at Jefferson Electric, we've made a conscious decision to run home runs to the switch box. Because guess what? At the end of the job, when everybody is you know, two, three months removed from what took place behind the walls, all the drywall's in place, if there's a glitch and something isn't working right, the diagnostic benefit of knowing the routing and the final destination of the home run and that it is in the switch box and the insight that gives into troubleshooting and repairing a circuit at that time or later down the road for any houses we've wired is extremely beneficial. I recommend consistency. Even if there is a small sacrifice to efficiency, consistency will yield the greatest returns over time. And the sacrifice to efficiency would be this. What if the switch box is not located in the most convenient location to be the first destination for the home run, well guess what, the consistency of each room being wired in the same fashion will yield better results long term. So in this situation, as we always do, we have decided to exceed code minimum because code minimum is the minimum allowable standard, but that's not optimal in this circumstance. This master suite, bedroom and closet, are on one dedicated 15 amp breaker. The breaker size corresponds to the wire size and it is not shared, meaning this circuit is dedicated to this space and is not shared with the bathroom, the hallway, or any other aspects of the house. Now I want you to understand this too. The word notch, when it comes to framing, is a dirty word. We can drill framing members typically without any kind of uh, repercussions. LVLs should not be drilled without contractor approval or supervisor approval. But notching the wood, cutting a notch out of the wood, should never be done. Notch is a bad word when it comes to joists, rafters, and in particular LVLs. This is a true story. I made this mistake one time because I didn't understand the structural integrity of an LVL in full. I was approved to drill three quarter inch holes through an LVL and essentially as many as I needed. So I decided to kind of lay them out and drill them, you know, spread them out. And so I drilled one here and I drilled one there and I, I had a whole bunch of home runs to pass through this LVL. So I laid them out to separate them, not understanding that what I effectively almost did to the LVL was because I drilled holes at these points, effectively almost cut a square that size out of the center of an LVL. I had a three quarter million dollar home, half of which was resting on this LVL, and I essentially cut a six by six square out of the middle of it. As soon as the general contractor saw that, he puked on his shoes, he got on the phone with the engineer, and had to go through a structural evaluation for 250 bucks to see if this LVL was still good for this situation or if they're gonna have to jack up the home and replace it. No joke, one of the most embarrassing moments of my career. So at each location here, in the entire room, every blue box, one, two, three, four gang, makes no difference, every blue box is required to have a hot feed. That way, that's where a hot, a neutral, and a ground come into that box. And then all but the final box are also gonna have a hot feed out to the next box to continue the series circuit around the perimeter of the room. So look at our wiring method in this situation. Hot feed passes over through the attic um, and bypasses the pocket door. No wiring inside the pocket door. And then from this point, rather than up and down the ladder, for the sake of time, we've drilled holes through the studs 
and routed around the perimeter of the room, the corners here get pretty congested. Thankfully, this corner is hollow on the back side, and so we're able to route wiring through there. There are tricks for that we'll show you in a later video if that's a solid corner and you don't have another option. Wiring then routes box to box to box around the perimeter of the entire room to complete the branch circuit. So the home run comes in, and the analogy is like this. The trunk of the tree is the electrical panel. The primary branch or limb coming from that tree is your home run. And that's exactly the terminology that the code uses as well. These are branch circuits. The secondary branch are the remaining conductors that spider to the rest of the room. In this case, we have one wire that's routing to the can lights in the ceiling, one wire that's routing to the center light in the ceiling that will house a fan light combination, and then we have two hots exiting this box. The hots will then feed around the room from home run destination number one to destination number two, three, four, such that these two outlets, one serving the room and one serving the master closet, are fed, the switch box is fed, and the hot then feeds around the room. So look to our other videos on receptacle spacing for where to place the receptacles around the perimeter of the room and wiring termination. But in this video, I wanna highlight some wiring thought processes. One is non-metallic cable like this. Romex must maintain at least two inches of separation from gas lines, that's imperative. The inspector is gonna be on red alert when he's walking the job. You will fail the inspection, you'll be mobilizing a team member to back out here to reroute wiring, and it will be a ding against you in the eyes of the general contractor. Point of clarification here, if you haven't seen one of these before, this is a pocket door. The door will physically take up the entire cavity of this framing space, and no wiring can be run in this space. So Firecock, in this case, for our jurisdiction, is required to have a two-hour barrier. It is a specialized cock that resists smoke and fire, and that is required between floors. So in all the penetrations, whether used or unused, in bottom plates and top plates, all vertical penetrations are required to be cocked in this manner, where the cock circumferences the wire and divides every wire in that hole such that they're completely, each one independently, completely circumferenced, sealing the spread of smoke and fire. That's the completion of this video. I invite you to join us for future videos where we talk about temporary construction power and permanent power for dwellings and businesses.